For a long time, people thought wetlands were wasteland. We've drained and filled our wetlands for housing, farming, and industry. Now, less than half of the nation's wetlands remain. But wetlands are not wasteland. Not to us, not to the ducks and geese, and not to the hundreds of other animals that depend upon them for survival. What's a wetland? It's a swamp, bog, marsh, pothole, playa, lake, or an area along creeks, streams, or rivers that's probably near your home no matter where you live in Texas. And because most wetlands are on private land, kids and our parents can make a big difference and help protect wetlands for the future. The Wetland Program is a good way to get involved. We're going to show you some of the wetland projects sponsored by the Adopt a Wetland Program. But first, we're going to show you some of the different kinds of wetlands found in Texas, how they're damaged or destroyed, and why they're so important to humans and animals. In Texas, we have six major types of wetlands. Gulf Coast salt marshes and freshwater marshes, Playa Lakes in the Panhandle, and coastal potholes, which are found in areas where there are usually no creeks or rivers. Freshwater springs and headwater streams found in central and southwest Texas. Forested wetlands like bottomland hardwoods found in east and central Texas. And west Texas wetlands. Wetlands are not only important in Texas, the amount of water on Earth is limited. We're not going to get any more. When it rains or floods, it's easy to think that the water supply is increasing, but it's really a giant recycling project. The rain, snow, or hail is created from water that has evaporated from lakes, rivers, ponds, and oceans. As this water vapor cools, it forms small water droplets. This is called condensation. When it cools even more, it becomes rain, snow, sleet, or hail. In these ways, it leaves and returns to the earth again and again. All wetlands have one thing in common, water. Sometimes it's salt water, sometimes it's fresh water, sometimes it's a combination. But wetlands are covered by water and have water logged or hydric soil and water loving or hydrophytic plants for a certain amount of time each year. Besides water, all wetlands are threatened, and all wetlands are important too, to us and to the wildlife that depend upon them. Some people still don't realize how important wetlands are. That's because so much of what they do for us is invisible, like flood control. See how mushy this ground is? The wetlands around rivers and the coast act like big sponges soaking up flood water from storms and hurricanes. They're an important buffer zone for the land and people around them. All of that's lost when wetlands are drained, filled, and developed. And wetland plants hold soil in place. Without them, the soil in many places would erode away, be blown by the wind, or carried off by floodwaters. Dirt carried downstream and into the ocean causes more problems for fish and other marine life. Wetlands are also natural water filters. Plants filter out pollutions as water flows across the wetland or as it moves downward to natural underground storage areas called aquifers. I remember the last drought. We couldn't water the lawn or wash the car, which wasn't too bad. But what if we didn't have enough to drink? Look at those pelicans. When you see all the animals here, you realize that wetlands are their home. Hundreds of different kinds of animals depend on wetlands for food, water, and cover. Especially birds. Wetlands support hundreds of thousands of birds. Snow geese, Canada geese, and all kinds of ducks. Texas is also on the migration route for neotropical birds that winter in Mexico and Central America. In the spring, they begin their migration north, stopping first at Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. From here, the migrants either cross the Gulf of Mexico or travel along the coast and stop at Texas wetlands 
before heading north to their breeding grounds. When they get here, they're tired and hungry. They depend on our wetlands from the coast to the panhandle for rest and food. And endangered species like whooping cranes, brown pelicans, bald eagles also make use of Texas wetlands. We don't see all the animals that are here though. Coastal wetlands support lots of important fishes and shellfish. Some, like oysters, never leave. Others, like shrimp, crab, sea trout, mullet, and flounder, use wetlands as nurseries. There's plenty of food and cover for the babies to grow. Then they head out into the Gulf. My teacher says that 90% of our fish and shellfish use coastal wetlands for spawning, nursery, or feeding grounds. It's a multi-million dollar industry, and it would fall apart if there weren't wetlands. We've lost wetlands to development, mainly. Farmers plow and plant them. Loggers drain swamps and cut the trees. Ranchers drain water for irrigation. And people build houses, factories, and power plants in them. In one way or another, we are all responsible for wetland losses. We eat the food the farmers grow, live in the houses developers build, and use the wood that loggers cut. In pollution, everything from using them as garbage dumps to oil spills, it's disgusting. You've seen how humans benefit from the wetlands. You also know we are responsible for most wetlands damage and loss. But humans can also save the wetlands. That's where Adopt the Wetland comes in. Kids can actually adopt a wetland near their homes or schools. It's a three-part plan. First, protecting wetlands. Second, creating, restoring, and enhancing wetlands. And third, doing research and learning more about wetlands. It's important, but it's also fun. It's tough to protect at your desk, so you have to get out there. Scientists call it field work. I just think it's the coolest science class I've ever had. This is an adopt a wetland restoration project in Premont, Texas that a landowner offered for adoption. Kids involved in Future Farmers of America are actually a restoring a wetland. They surveyed the site, laid down pipe to bring in water, and are now monitoring the new wetland. They'll keep track of all the animals that use it, take water samples, and collect yeah. other information that state and federal agencies can use. This 4-H group in Nueces County near Corpus Christi, Texas, is surveying wetland flora, the plants that grow in and around wetland areas. Plants are one of the ways scientists determine if an area is a wetland. There are about 5,000 kinds of plants that grow in U.S. wetlands, but you don't have to know them all. If you can recognize cattails, willows, cordgrass, or arrowheads, you can recognize most Texas wetlands. The Adopt-A-Wetland program works with government agencies, conservation groups, industries, teachers, and landowners to increase public awareness about wetlands and their importance to wildlife, and all of us. And it also helps to protect, restore, and steady our wetlands. So get involved. Tell a friend. Ask a parent. And adopt a wetland! <laughs>
Your purchase of fishing and hunting equipment and motorboat fuels supports sport fish and wildlife restoration and boating access facilities.